I wanted to talk to you some about kind of the dueling banjos routine that the Miami Dolphins have at quarterback. I know two has been the starter and he's going to be the starter in week 17, but they have brought in Ryan Fitzpatrick almost as a relief pitcher and Fitzmagic led the Dolphins back against the Raiders and eliminated the Raiders from the postseason. But I'm going to say, I don't think that's sustainable this late in the season, not to have an offensive identity to say, this is the guy at quarterback. I can't recall a time where that's worked to say, Hey, it's not working. We're going to bring in our sixth man off the bench at quarterback to be able to provide relief the way that the Dolphins did this late in the season. It's not to take away from the coaching job that Brian Flores has done in Miami, but I think long-term big picture this season, it kind of puts a limit to how far they could go in the postseason. The reason why I think it doesn't put a limit to them because Coach Brian Flores have probably one of the best special teams and probably one best one of the best defenses in the NFL. So that's why it doesn't limit them. On another note, Mark, it's an understanding. And what I mean by the understanding is it's, it's a good understanding and the two guys who got to go in and out have a great relationship. And that's hard because egos can be, egos are heavy at that level because you always, one, you always want to play. Two, you just want to show how down, dominant you are. And that's just becoming an alpha. And you to play that sport, you have to be an alpha, uh, or you have to have an alpha mentality. For 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 Tua and Fitz Magic to understand what's going on and to accept them, them two are accepted. At, at first, when they made the transition and said Tua was going to be the be the starter, I felt like Ryan. It, it was hard for me to accept that because I'm looking at it like, man, what I did wrong. <laughs> like we're on a three game winning streak. So what's going on? But for, for Coach Brian Flores to, I guess, sat him down to talk to him, understand the relationship those two have, like you see the you you see the spark. And that's all Fitz Magic, if you think about it, has ever been. He's been a spark. Now you ask Fitz Magic to lead you to a playoff game or to get you past eight games, that's just in his resume. That's something he's never done. Now you ask him to come off the bench, like you say, like a, a closer or a six man, which I think he's the best six man of the year. And there goes the spark and there goes the change up. So now as a defense coordinator, it's like, dang, I've really been coaching. I've been coaching my defense this whole time to keep two in the pocket. And hopefully he don't get around and make plays with his legs. He gonna make a few plays with his arms, but right now, mostly he's making plays with his legs. And now you got a guy in Ryan Fitz, Fitzpatrick. That's what he does. He sits in the pocket. And he make plays from the neck up. So he's going to find the open receiver. And that's what he came in and did against the against the Raiders. So now when you do, when you do play the Miami Dolphins, you got to have two game plans. You got to have a game plan for Tour. You got to have a game plan for Ryan, <laughs> for Ryan uh, Fitzpatrick. And that's hard. That's hard. One as a defensive coordinator, that's that's hard one on the defense because now your mind got to change up. Okay, now we got a running quarterback. Okay, now we got a quarterback who can sit in the pocket and throw the ball. Now that's changed up my coverages. Now that's changed up my defense alignment. So that's just what it is. So I do think it can work. And the only reason why I think, well, there's two reasons why I think it can work. One, they got a, a fire, a fire as defense. Two, between Tua and Fitz, Fitzpatrick, them boys have an understanding between each other. Not saying they like it, they just got a good understanding. 